So after an entire, I'm assuming you've hit the... Oh, yeah, yeah, the button's on. Yeah, the button's on. After, like, an entire year of almost taking my eye out with this damn ponytail palm, palm, you know, I did something really brilliant. I took the plant and moved it to, like, the coffee table. Yeah. And I moved the little board thing here over to where the plant was. So now, I, you know, I'm not, you know, peering through the jungle like, uh, I don't know, the old... Uh, old TV show in the 60s where the guy was always very interesting. Well, wasn't it Gill- Gilligan's? No, no, uh, they um, would peek through the palm trees. Yeah, they peeked through the palm trees, or maybe it was uh, Laughing with the old oh, guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, don't, I mean, mind you, I was a toddler at the time, but I remember Oh yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, oh. I'm done with that. I'm not doing that. And it's a cool plant. Yeah, it's it's an Ikea plant. Is and it really? It's, yeah, I had. And uh, it's lovely. I bought like four. Two of them are alive. Oh. And honestly, I am... There are many things I'm good at. Plants is not one of them. This one must be pretty low maintenance. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, what it is, it's like a weed in the wildlife, which means I can keep it alive. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, that is kind of a cool plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, th- that was really hilarious. I mean, it was always poking you and stabbing you and all that. You know, I got I, this is not you know, necessarily on topic for us, but did you by any chance see the news story about the black lab that got lost and, and returned home? Did you hear about this? No, no, no. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. No, I can't, you know, not everything on the great Northern sex cast has to be like sex or health related. It can be happy because if you're happy, you're going to want to go do the other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. I I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll reach out. Give me some straws. I will fucking grasp them. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I love that about yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing about this is Disney could not have done this any better had oh. it had it been orchestrated. I believe it was in the state of Kansas where this happened, but this family thought that their beloved black lab had disappeared. Mm-hmm. And then a few days later, they got, you know, information that somebody had seen him kind of running across the field. Mm-hmm. So they went, and it, this happened to be a neighboring, mm-hmm. like, landowners yeah. property because you know that's out in the country and um sure enough they they see their dog bounding across the field with another lab this mm-hmm. a yellow lab with them so he found a buddy and a goat and oh, they're and all goat. through and a goat and the best part is they've got video of the black lab running up to the car mm-hmm. jumping in the car then here comes the white lab it jumps in the car and then the goat gets in it's hysterical yeah. They, and and they're all just like leaping through the field. They were having a fucking riot, those three. As a child, we had a Doberman. Doberman got out. Uh-oh. Got loose. At the exact same time, down the street, Mrs. Merriman, I'm sure she's passed away now because she you know, uh, had a, uh, a German Shepherd. And the German Shepherd happened to get out that day. For the next, like, two and a half, three days... There were sightings of the Doberman and the German Shepherd running all over Hopkins and Minnetonka. <laughs> the Krauts, the two Krauts yeah. on the loose. <laughs> you, know, ter- you know, freaking out people. But they were having the damnedest time. I come home from school. I walk into the, the family room. And there's, you know, this was Cleo. This is our dog. I can't remember the name of the, um, the shepherd. shepherd. They were just, uh, like, having a nap on the, uh, uh, on the, on the table, uh, on the, like, underneath, like, the, the coffee table and stuff out, and they were, like, draped around each other and just hanging out. Oh, my God. They just... My dad was home. He heard, like, a scratching at the door. He walked to the front door, opened the door, and the dogs wander in, and then have a nap. That's adorable. So when we came home, I put the leash on the dog and walked it down. And at least at that point, I was never scared, because this was a very loud barky German Shepherd. Yeah. Which is sort of freaky out. Now, not anymore. No, you know, it's just... Because when you come home... And the dog is, like, taking a nap in your living room. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, it was, it really was, like, that's, I just opened the door. And then we had another dog that was a husky that kept running away to Target. Loved Target. <laughs> Sounds like my kind so, of dog. So we could, yes. So the dog would come back. And then, then the family that we were watching it for, they moved, and then they moved back, and then they could get the dog. They asked if they could have a dog. We're like, of course you can have your dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, three weeks later, I look up, because the dog that overrun to Target, mm-hmm. I looked on the porch that we had built, and there was the dog. So, I, like, miles away. It finally finds its way home from, like, 30 miles away. That's hilarious. Yeah, I love the dog. I, I like I said, I just, I, I just, I do think, though, that, like, my sister is great with her dog, and my, my, my uh, brother's family has a dog. I am a cat person. Yeah. There's only so much steaming crap I want to pick up. Yeah. You know, 
And I just don't have time for them. I love them. I love the doggies. Yeah, well, for you and Fred are tight. Mm-hmm. The studio yeah. dog. No Fred today. I know. Fred. Fred's at home. He's mm-hmm. chilling out uh, right mm-hmm. now. But um, So, okay. So, yeah. now we've just indulged the goat. in our uh, doggies and goats. And well, doggies. So, I love us. I love Pets, pets are great. Pets, I, I mean, for, I'm, they're just so many. They just make you so happy. Yes. Mm-hmm. I couldn't agree mm-hmm. more. Um, so, gosh, you know, uh, it's it, the word has gotten out. At one of my day jobs, that uh, about the sex cast. <laughs> well, you've been doing that for a while. How long? You just, it's not like you're shy about it. No, but it's you, like, you, but it's not like you. Okay, it's not like we're both wearing buttons. To go ask me about my sex cast. But, right, I know, but okay, it's maybe not. A, maybe I should. It's making okay. the it's making the rounds now, mm-hmm. and so. We've got a whole new crop of people now. <laughs> oh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So welcome to the Great Northern Sex Cast in its fourth year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I saw this. I saw this. And it just is so weird. But then mm-hmm. so much of what we discuss is um, this guy, um, uh, he had a bad back, right? Which, you know, it's not mm-hmm. an unusual thing. Um, I know many people who do, Mm -hmm. um, but he decided that the cure for this, right. Don't, don't by any means contact a chiropractor or someone like that. No. Why not inject yourself with your own semen? Because that's going to fix it. So he thought, are you with me? Inject it where? Into his arm. So, no, he wasn't putting it like in his, we're just like, I, I jerk off. Mm-hmm. I s- he sucked in, like into a syringe, apparently, and then decided that he would inject. Uh huh. Oh my god! Details are rather scant about how it got from point A to point B, but it did. Okay. It, there's no way that it, it is. Did he die? No. 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 But he did this for 18 months. Uh huh. Once a month for 18 months, and um. Okay, so remember we spent a lot of time <laughs> explaining to folks about don't put things in your butt that are not that are not designed to be yes. in your butt. Yes. I think we'll, you know, we might have to add an addendum here that don't uh, put ejaculate where it's not designed to go to be. I think that's a really mm-hmm. good idea, Colleen. I think we should put that in the bylaws. Yeah, yeah, the sex yeah, cast yeah. bylaws. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So anyway, um, he's he's doing this for eighteen months, and uh, he's at a doctor visit, um, and uh, the doctor noticed something, uh, you know, utterly odd on his arm, and um, the doctors hospitalized him. He had to get treated with antimicrobial microbial. That's hard to say. Therapy, and then um, you know they documented this case, and they said, you know, um, it's just. You shouldn't be shooting stuff up. Okay, I have to look this up. So, I'm wondering if, like, it is a weird, uh, uh, into the parts. Yeah, weird fetish that we just don't know about. Do we need, you know, your body? Because yeah, it just seems, you know, when I start, um, uh, start typing, injecting your semen into, mm-hmm. uh, what comes up is assistive, assisted reproductive technology. You know, see, but that would be in a place where it's supposed to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, that would, um, uh, I'll have to play this later. Me and my, I, I, I saw this story in two places. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just me oh, finding Forbes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Reddit, of course. Yeah. And, uh, well, the thing is, uh, the, okay. The first three stories after I do that is all about the, this gentleman. And then you get into a uh, home insemination. Okay. You know, that, yeah. that, you know, well, isn't that how yeah. most people do it? Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you yeah. T- took a while, to, but you got it. Colleen finally drove up here. <laughs> it's just, it's, you know, there's been, a, it's finals time at, at my house. So, so teenagers, because of course, there's no studying done unless it's done at the last minute. So sure. they're up late studying, friends over, up at the house early studying. And I'm just like, you know, you had an entire, like, Weekend, <laughs> yeah. which at any point in time you could have cracked open your damn book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, you know, the whole if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would be done at all. Yeah, and that's pretty much what's going on. But but then there's yeah, but, but there ends up being like a dance party in the middle of it. 
so there's no reason why. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm really honestly, I, ha, you know, I was having my own little personal dance parties. You yeah. Know, this, you know, I think that, I think that. it's just pretty awesome. I, mm-hmm. I think it's it's a good yeah. day. Random, you know, mm-hmm. dances breaking out is a oh, yeah. beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so this is weird. <laughs> um, okay. As so many things again are, but this I can't tell if this is for real. Okay, so this woman in this very cute little um, English hamlet is being accused of running a cougar sex den in her out of her home, right? And um, so the, all these people um, are posting things and saying, well, I see men spraying themselves with deodorant before they enter her residence. Another person posted, <laughs> you can't buy milk or a loaf here, but you can buy sex, apparently. <laughs> and then so, so somebody, of course, from, you know, consults the local reverend who says it's something people here are concerned about, but it's really not my area of expertise. <laughs> and then, I mean, everybody's just all fucking up in arms about this thing. And, um, allegedly, um, you know, it's a hundred, a $200 an hour brothel, but she says, listen, this is a little patent place. Um, the cops have shown up. Um, there's nothing, you know, you know, untoward here. These people just don't have enough to do, but it's like making the rounds in like the little towny newspapers. So, in, so she has or has not opened up a brothel or she says she, not, or she just happened to say like, Get a lot of sex. Well, they just, the, there's all these postings about how many men are coming in and out. And she said, look, I was, she, she's a, she's a Navy engineer. She mm-hmm. just got out of the Royal Navy and she said, most of my friends are guys. Yeah. I have a lot of men coming <laughs> over, but you know, I, whatever. Yeah, I was really, I, I just, the, the, the busy bodiness of, of people and, and other people's sex lives. I mean, yeah. I just, I mean, the, I'm wondering, like, there has to be some sort of evolutionary reason for that that you're that, that you're so worried about the other people having sex. I yeah. mean, honestly, you would think that you know you'd just be mostly worried about you having sex so that your genes can go on. I mean, the whole survival of the species mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. But what about what, what? Why do I care if other people are having sex? I mean, it, it's been. I mean, it's. It seems to be like most societies have a point where they're like that you seem to be worried about h- how other people are having sex. <laughs> or how much of it, how much of it or, or how who, often or, or with who. Yeah. Or whether it's I mean I mean I'm you know, if someone I live in a apartment building and someone's really loud during the sex and interviewing my sleep, I you know, at least slip them a note. Say, yeah. by the way, I can hear you. But other than that, I you know, the the evolution I know the I'm going to have to do some more Googling. Well, you know, you bring up another interesting mm-hmm. thing or something that makes my mind travel mm-hmm. over to the question is, what is the what is the nosy gene? Like, what makes you nosy versus mm-hmm. not nosy? And why are so many people nosy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I did, is it, you know, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, like Mrs. Kravitz. I mean, that was a oh. great character in Bewitched. Mm-hmm. You know, and she was obviously, you know, I mean, that character was obviously written as a, your, your standard busy, bored, you know, housewife. Yeah. You know, with stereotypes and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, there are things that I'm interested in and the things that I'm not interested in. And, and honestly, even though I know a lot about people's sex lives because people trust me to ask me questions, mm-hmm. I don't seek it out. No. no. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't care. I mean, it's, it's not as though I care whether or not my neighbor, you know, how much sex my neighbors is having or how much sex my friends are having or... Or anything, or, or, or just people, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but I'm like, why does that make any? I mean, you know. Yeah, no, it's I don't and I don't get it. And I, I not only don't really particularly care mm-hmm. what most other people are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I really wanted, I, the TMI thing, I'm I get really heaved out pretty easy, and I don't want to know what people that I know. Or maybe, live near are doing. Yeah, well, maybe you know, maybe it's just a way to know that you're not alone in something or fear of missing out. Is someone doing something that I should be doing? Is someone doing, you know, I don't know. But like, like I said, a lot of the things we talk about is that someone just buttered their nose into something and I can't figure out why they went there in the first place. Yeah, oh, good, yeah, me, I, I, yeah. I myself, I yeah, totally agree so, with you. So then my brain went into a, like, why does, you know. Yeah, how did we evolve to do this? Yes. I don't 
Yes. So I'm laughing because mm-hmm. there was actually a TV commercial <laughs> that that featured this this phenomenon, if you will. Okay. So it's a it's a cute. Um, you get the the feeling that this is a retired couple, mm-hmm. and the husband's trying to stay in shape, mm-hmm. and he goes out and he has an app and he runs and mm-hmm. he prints it out and he'll run a f- flower and he gives it to his mm-hmm. wife and it was for something about staying healthy, mm-hmm. you know, as you age. But mm-hmm. he would give her these he'd run these patterns to make these pictures uh, for her. Okay, thirty mm-hmm. three year old Claire from New Jersey accidentally ran a penis pattern <laughs> and now it's her obsession like to, she to, to run different penises yes no. she she runs in penis patterns now because she did it by accident the first time thought it was so funny um now she she does it on purpose okay and so she said she started four years ago she got lost on a run and after checking her gps she noticed she had traced a penis so ever since then you know she's created an instagram to to document her travels called Dick Run Claire and she's like I love looking for Dick Run routes and she's like I feel like I should be on strange addiction now <laughs> um and she goes I love to run it's my favorite way to work out but drawing a penis as I do it is a total bonus <laughs> which is a pretty bonus, innocent I hobby like, I like bonus penis That's bonus good. penis is the best mm-hmm. I, you know what if I Whatever keeps her healthy. I mean, this is honestly, this is hilarious because I mean, honestly, running like a boob pattern in a circle. Uh, I mean, you know, whatever. But come here, this is this is this is brilliant. It's genius. It's, yeah, it is absolutely genius. Because and, I have friends that post that have tried some of this. I've never, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, um, uh, someone tried to run like 2019 when they were doing something and got confused. <laughs> they were doing, I would. They were doing the. Um, they're doing a uh, like a New Year's Day or a fun run or something yeah. like that, and they were then and like it was close. Like ah oh, damn, I can see where I screwed up, and they tried to map it out. But I I think if I had if I did this and I had seen and, and I had made accidental or bonus penis, mm-hmm. yes, I there would be a I that would be it. Yeah, there, there would the, the new the mm-hmm. new thing. Well, she's got twenty two thousand Instagram fo- followers. And she says now she's getting screenshots from other people sharing their stuff. But she said uh, her thirty three, uh, her the thirty three year old's biggest run was a fourteen mile penis, mm. and now she's her, it's her goal to um, to dry, to run a penis in every one of the fifty states. <laughs> I mean, people used to collect uh, spoons. Yeah. Now, yeah. now you I mean, collect your GPS. Yeah. Uh, run bonus penis drawings, and I I wholeheartedly uh, applaud this woman. Yeah, me too. I, Go Claire. I, I, I find I find the fact that there is there's there's all glorious things about this. You've got you've got humor. You've got the silliness about uh, sex. You've yes. got a, obviously a healthy attitude. Yep. About like the human body and and that, yep. that it's not it's not like you know she ran it didn't pay attention to it you know and and like you know and then sent you know put it on social media not paying attention then everybody went oh. A penis, ooh, a penis. Pearl clutching, pearl, pearl clutching, pearl clutching. Pearl clutching. Yeah. She's embracing bonus penis. Yes, and 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 going with it. And I'm, that is spectacular. That 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 person is healthy and humorous. Mm-hmm. I would like to meet her. Yes, she yes. sounds like she would she, be fun. She what she needs is bonus penis plus like a pub crawl. She see if you can combine. This, ooh. Would, this would be a spectacular like, fundraiser. Fundraiser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We can think of all the great causes we could. I, of course, would just meet, meet you up at the bar because this body is not running. You're not going to run. No, no, no. <laughs> Knees, asthma, and, and and just outright bored. I don't understand running. I can understand bike ride, different things, but I just, running, running doesn't compute for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel you. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, so PETA, you know, PETA does some pretty interesting things. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they've... I got to give them clever points usually for what they come up with, mm-hmm. even though some of it I found yeah, kind of too much, but mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um, so now they've got, uh, they're trying to get people to go vegan by claiming it will increase sexual prowess. <laughs> and, um, so they've got, um, these guys in a video that's captioned traditional masculinity is dead. The secret to male sexual stamina is veggies. And so there's all these people dancing with genitalia-shaped veggies. <laughs> and 
<laughs> how is that not funny? Yeah. Like just... that is always going to be funny to me. Like, mm-hmm. and, but people like did not appreciate it. There were, there were all these tweets like, Oh my God, this is awful. Another one said, thanks for ruining vegetables. Going to go get a steak. Another one said, I ain't eating veggie anymore or gross. <laughs> you put me off veggies for life. I've never uh, cringed so hard. Thanks, PETA. Trolls. Absolute trolls. They don't like it. You know, honestly, I'm, it's, a, it's an organization that I understand their mission. Yeah. But I do not agree with an enormous amount of their What's the word I want? The, 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 just their plan, you know, how they go about things. Yeah, they're very, they're very brash. They're I very. Do, I do think that they tend to actually hurt their cause on a lot of things more than they do to to help it. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, then again, go bold or go home. I mean, I get that if you really yeah. believe in something, and yeah. that's fine. And I, I'm, you know, I'm an omnivore. I don't, you know, yeah. I've been I, seriously considering. Um, Less meat and less things because I do know that it's just the toll on the planet for eating meat. You know, and, and I'd like there to actually maybe be some oxygen if my child decides to have children and I, you know, and I live long enough to be a grandparent. I mean, I consider it's, you know, got to be doing some, you know, some stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that, I mean, I, obviously I think the sex toy industry is probably going for the same planet too because the amount of rechargeable, non battery using, um, it's just there. It, Folk, things that our folks are doing or the packaging that's changing. I mean, I, I don't think there's not an industry that is looking at that. I, going you, through there. I, I oh. agree. I agree. And you've brought this up with regard to your industry mm-hmm. quite often. However, I will say, I feel like packaging for mainstream items is worse than ever. It's all that stuff in that really hard plastic mm-hmm. that's completely formed to the product. And you need... You need a chainsaw mm-hmm. to get them apart, yeah. and it's a ton of wasted plastic. What is up with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 theft proof. They're trying desperately not to lose items. I mean, it is it is really frustrating because I will get things in here, and they're like, I have to I have to add tape to them, or we have to actually you know shrink wrap them, or then they'll find something that. You know, like, oh, this is great, but someone can get into this section of the packaging. I mean, oh, they've really? got, yeah, and so they steal part of it. <laughs> and they're just like, you've got to be kidding me. But I, just packaging is, I mean, it's just, it's got to be a way for there to be less. I mean, I know folks were complaining, um, uh, like, uh, all those meal planning services, you know, where they send you the stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. They said, we enjoyed the food, but the amount of packaging was obscene. Mm. Or, you know, I was going through there, and I mean, there have been items that we've got, you know, that we've gotten in, and then we just, we immediately look at the packaging. Because, you know, when we see a product, sometimes when they send samples, it's not in its, we don't, oh, you know, we okay. don't hit the packaging sometimes. And then it shows up, and we're like, oh my God, what is this? How do we display it? It takes up too much room on the hook. We can't stack them while you're doing it. I mean, everything about it. I mean, interesting. It's a, yeah, folks, re, I mean, if you, I think. Cutting down on packaging would probably solve a lot of our plastics problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Packaging is intense. You know, it's funny when you were just talking about that, Colleen. Mm-hmm. I don't, th- I know this is going to sound like a, a strange thing to say, but I don't think about theft. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, but you obviously have mm-hmm. to because you, you're in a business in, where you run a certain loss, mm-hmm. you know, constantly. Yeah. But it, it never occurs to me number one, to steal, but I forget that other people do. You know what I mean? Cause I'm just yeah. not, it's weird. We, we, we don't have compared to other businesses. We don't have that much theft. Really? A lot, because a lot of times people steal. There's two major reasons people steal. They need the product. It's food. It's medicine, something like that. You know, it's going through their art clothing and stuff like that. Or they'll steal to, to return it, to get cash, to buy the things that they need. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, that's, you know, the, the small, you know, Theft and, and uh, shoplifting rings and stuff like that. I don't take returns. You know, we check everything that goes out. And so what I tend to get is um, opportune, you know, theft or people that are embarrassed about the item. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so they'll, they'll, they'll rip into the packaging. I've had to, I've had to you know, and, and as packaging changes, as display changes, I've had to rearrange stores. Mm. And, you know, you've got you know, cameras and checkpoint systems and different things to try and do that because a lot of times people are just really embarrassed i mean um folks used to uh, 
you know, like run into the store, grab a doll and run out, or grab and run. Mm. You know, and this happened downtown or things going through there. Um, certain things that are just too pricey, you've got to put in a case that are too small. I, you know, uh, it just, because there's just too many, I guess I call them too many souvenirs. Yeah. And it just, it is. I have to, I look at things, and I'm like, how am I going to secure this? Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't. I want it to be accessible so someone can ask about it, touch it, look at it. But how do I keep it, you know, I, but I still got to, like, pay bills, which means I have to sell things. Yeah. And it's not, and so I'm looking at, and so, my, like I said, the embarrassment factor is, is, is big. People will steal because, you know, uh, because they're embarrassed that they, you know, want the item or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Or just, you know, sometimes people are just assholes and steal things. But, you know, it's not... It's not like folks are at the Columbia store at the Mall of America and they're grabbing an entire rack of jackets yeah. and putting them on Craigslist. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not happening with yeah. my product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's good. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's mm-hmm. such a weird thing. Oh yeah. my God. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, this, this is real. This just happened. Okay. A friend of mine, um, just moved to Ohio. They mm-hmm. live, um, on, you know, in some little enclave that their house mm-hmm. is actually on Lake Erie. And, um, so they near Cleveland, they should go to the rock and roll. Oh, they've already been. They love, love. And, and it's a cool, you know, yeah, I had no idea how much I was going to love it. Yeah. It's great. Okay. She, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So Sunday night they were getting a snowstorm, which we've Mm -hmm. had little of here this year. I know. I completely missed the Twin Cities area. It's got north of us, south of us, all around us. Yeah. It is. It it just, it's really icky out. I mean, I, I, not that I want to be shut down, but it's Minnesota. It's winter. There should be some snow. Hey, I know. Mm-hmm. I know. So they were in the middle of a storm, so he went to pick up a pizza. And having just relocated to the snow from Arizona, mm-hmm. um, he decided to leave the car running when he went in to get the pizza. And watched the guy drive off with it, who stole it. And the hilarious part about this is, talk about dumb crime. Mm-hmm. Um He's standing there with his pizza, and this other gentleman said, did that guy just steal your car? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And he goes, well, guess what? He was just in the laundromat a couple doors over applying for a job. (laughs) This is for real. I kid you not. (laughs) So police come. Police Mm -hmm. go get that. There's cameras at the pizza place. There's cameras at the Mm -hmm. laundromat. They had the car back before midnight. Yeah, I mean, it 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 was opportunity. Dude you know, oh, is in jail. Like, but yeah. What? I mean, you can't make this shit up. No, I, uh, I, I, when people steal stuff for, from us, and then that, or one time uh, there was a, uh, someone broke into a bunch of stores in the one besides ours, oh, and then okay. they ended up getting caught. Ooh. And then I found one of the guys wearing some of the lingerie in the backseat of the car. And oh, was it, that's a whole other yeah, interesting whole, story. Yeah. yeah. And so that was really fun because. The, the, the officers looked and said, yeah, because they'd already, you know, I, obviously I, my alarm had gone off. I knew I had been broken into, mm-hmm. but I hadn't even finished figuring out what was stolen <laughs> when the officers <laughs> drove back over with a box and said, is this your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> because there wasn't really a lot of other places <laughs> they were going to find us. Yes. Mm-hmm. That must have been yeah. and I'm just a giggle like, yeah, for everybody. I'm like, I don't want it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then the guy had to go to the county jail wearing it. Nice. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm sure he got the orange jumpsuit really fast, but even so. Yeah. Like, oh, God. I'm sure you did okay, the walk I, of shame. I, I hadn't thought it's of a that. whole new meaning to the walk I of shame. I have not thought about that in a very long time. No, that's mm-hmm. a good story. Yeah. Um, you know, cats are in the news. Um, we've actually talked about this before. Mm. Um, but another case has emerged, so um, it's, it bears mentioning once again. Um, do you remember when we talked about a link between cat owners and BDSM? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. they actually did a study, and it was published in the journal Evolutionary Psychology. And researchers found that, though, that, that there's a, the parasite in cat poop, Mm-hmm. The one Toxoplasma gondii, mm-hmm. or Toxoplasmosis, is a disease. It's the same stuff that mm-hmm. the reason why pregnant women aren't allowed to clean yeah. the cat mm-hmm. box. Um, it can make you more aggressive and make you um, increase your sense of, of <laughs> adventure and danger and whatever. 
But they're saying that, it, you know, just because you have a cat, the link is not necessarily, you know, but, but cat people are more likely because they actually documented it. Is that silly? <laughs> um, I am probably more aggressive when I see my cats destroying shit, but that's about it. <laughs> Yours are very busy. They, they are effing adorable kitty cats, but they are little shits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then when they, uh, then when I find them all curled up next to me at night, I'm like, oh. And then I look over and I go, what the hell are you doing to your sister? I'm like, that just separated her. It's like, you don't have the parts. That does not look right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It is so weird sometimes. I'm like, oh. I know that they lick each other, but I don't need to know about it. Sorry. No problem. No. Okay. Um, so this is, I'm sorry, but I get it that, you know, you've got to, you know, make time for sex. But mm-hmm. this, there's this whole article, we will put it up on the Great Northern Sex Cast mm-hmm. Facebook page, about s- uh, scheduling sex. And one of the directors of uh, the uh, Modern Sex Therapy Institutes, it's a you know psychiatrist, Rachel Needle, don't, I'm mean, seriously, it's her name, mm-hmm. um, is talking about scheduled sex can help the relationship, both, both partners know that their sex life is valued, no, and they want you to write a menu down. And many, because I know that I know that um, several when when Dr. Marketing was here about a year ago, uh, I remember her talking very much about a date night is an important. To, I mean, to make your relationship a priority. Yeah. And you know, you, I think you do need because life is exhausting. It's absolutely yeah. exhausting. I'm not sure, you know, I can see, you know, I mean, a date night to, to my, you know, you might need to define what that means. <laughs> yeah. spending them, but I, I'm not sure I need a, a sex menu for it. I think by that time you sort of know what's going on. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. You know, it was, it was last show or the show before where we had the, the Excel spreadsheet mm-hmm. about the, yeah, you know, I, attempts I, to have sex. sex. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, once you, once you have to start using like Microsoft office, the thrill is kind of out of it for me. <laughs> that's, that's a mood killer. For well, Kel. you know, I mean, I mean, just like possibly that I means some people need a really good list. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a whole organization thing. You've been watching that thing on, on Netflix, the, the, the little Japanese woman that tidies oh, everything. Oh, Marie Kondo. Whatever yeah. Whatever's like that. And I'm wondering, you know, I, I couldn't, I watched about three minutes of the show and I am actually a fairly tidy human being. So the show actually made me jumpy. I couldn't, I couldn't watch the mess. Oh, okay. I did, no, because I remember years ago when they had the hoarding shows and I watched like one or two before it got gross. And then I just realized, no, I don't like, you know, it's, yeah. no, it's too much. And I'm like, I wonder if by any chance, I mean, you know, I, you never see them like <laughs> the bedrooms or the, the the stuff in the sex. I'm like, if you're li- maybe you do need a list for sex or you need a list for, for anything. If you, if you're that unorganized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah it, 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 just bring your pocket protector into the bedroom. Why don't you? <laughs> if you're that point, I mean, really, but it's okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging real yeah. much. But, um, mm-hmm. okay. So, um, Chloe Kardashian, um, got a whole big supply of camel, bleh, camel toe concealers sent to her in the mail. And instead of being offended because they're like, Hey Chloe, I, I heard you might have some use use for these. I hope they work. She was thrilled. She took pictures. She put them on Instagram and honestly, I, 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 I don't understand the attraction of, of following this family. But I cannot deny their media and business set. Mm-hmm. I cannot. So mm-hmm. instead of she's like, with you know, it's like, okay, let's work with this. What do we got here? Yeah, you know that is that is outstanding. Yeah, because I do. I mean, I, I guess they must. I guess she must wear very tight clothing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And by the way, just so you know, Camel Toe Concealers have very positive reviews on Amazon. Mm-hmm. So, in case you did not know that there was I mean, such a fucking thing, there mm-hmm. is. I mean, honestly, couldn't it just be like a panty liner? I mean, think about it for a second. You know, just a little. And so then, you know, you're protecting, you know, you're, you're dealing with moisture because women are moist. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's moisture. Yes. And this, you can have the two different things. I'm not sure I've been, I mean, you know, how much bulk I actually want, I, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I mean, the, it's just, you know, you don't want too much stuff shoved down there. 
You no. just don't. Ooh. No, and I don't I don't want a helmet for my hoo ha. No, no. It sounds like a hoo ha helmet, but I don't know. I'll have to look at a picture. You, you know, you should possibly think about trademarking that. That's good. You like that? I like that. Obviously, do you? I really do. Well, we should look helmet. into it. Yeah, we should. Well, we should just, like, yeah. I'm just, yeah, oh, okay, I'm just. I, I can see Colleen. I can see the cogs, uh-huh. like turning. No, really, like, you just said that I want help. Alliterate. I, 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 I like myself some alliteration. I know you do. I, I'm a, I'm a big freak for alliteration, mm-hmm. rhyming, and good acronyms. Mm-hmm. I also like me a good acronym. Mm-hmm. Uh, dun, da, 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 another fetish we have not covered yet here on the Great Northern Sex Cast. Okay, so once again, you know. It is, it is important to know that, you know, this is probably it, to know you're not alone. You know, the fetish. So, so, so is this, it's, so it, is this going to be like a lot of people fetish that we don't know about and they've just named something that decided to get their 15 minutes of internet sex fame? Well, mm-hmm. I, I, I must preface the segment by confessing that I read it. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. This one's called the blueberry fetish. Has nothing to do with fur. I know she's trying to figure it out, and you know what really bugs me is Colleen. You usually guess that it's gotten a little weird around here, but you will not guess this. Well, oh, if it doesn't have to do with fruit and has to do with blue and berry, I'm assuming it has to do with um, blue balls. No, but very, very as oh. usual. Excellent okay. guess. Excellent guess. Um, apparently, this gal kind of put it out there. She's 21. And she says her partner is only interested in blueberry sex. This involves sleeping with someone who is severely bloated and swollen. So think Willy Wonka and the violet. <laughs> you know? Well, so, yeah. so, so the words, in other words, uh, this person, like, hangs around like Walgreens and looks for people getting prednisone prescriptions. <laughs> that That's actually be? a really good pickup idea <laughs> because everybody on Reddit told her to dump this freak. But you know, she says my boyfriend can only orgasm when I'm severely bloated. And she said he isn't bothered about sex, but the process of inflation is the only thing that really excites him. She said last time we did anything sexual, I had to chug two liters of Coke and eat a whole packet of Mentos along with a liter of water. It's really uncomfortable for me, but it made him happy. And um, (laughs) I obliged and everybody said, look, it's all about him. Why should you be uncomfortable? (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. I I don't know. I just can't. No. No, that can't be a. Anything that anybody can think, think of, of, somebody from, gets... Some, someone gets off on. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, it is really frustrating, but... It's kind of I a mean, universal sexual truth. Considering the fact that, you know, I have to pee all the time, the idea of having that much fluid in me, and then having sex. I mean, I, the, the mechanics of that yeah, would be quite difficult. Now, mind you, she says she's young, so, mm-hmm, she, probably, so she probably had more than likely has probably not given birth or, um, or has, you know, severe, you know, has some, you know, bladder issues. She might be able to hold. I would think you'd get one unbelievable raging UTI from that. Yeah. That's just too much, that's too much fluid. I don't, I don't think this is particularly healthy for her. No. I would, I, there are, there are things that I, you know, there's, you know, the good given in game, which is I think something that Dan Savage says and a whole bunch of different things, you know, indulge your partner, be, you know, you know, communicate, talk to each other, but this, you're right. I don't think this is healthy for her. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I don't say mentally, I mean, just physically healthy. Right, right, right. You know, really, you know, you know, I, I, I like the fact that she's like, okay, you know, this thing, you know, well, well, I'll give it a shot, but I don't, I don't think she, you know, that someone should continue something that makes them physically uncomfortable. Yeah. I was going through there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blueberry, but I do. I like. I uh, yeah. The, yeah, it was violet, wasn't it? Violet, violet Beauregard, wasn't it? Yeah, I couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked Willy Wonka. Is yeah, the, the, I could see the blueberry thing. Although, although I suppose they could have called it Augustine Gloop Syndrome too. For God's sakes, he was big old. He was. <laughs> yeah, he was an overeater. Yeah, the Gloop fe- the Gloop fetish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. Uh, this is new. This is new. Mm. Um, have, 
there is a new thing now, um, erotic hypnosis. And, uh, we've got a story. Um, we'll post it to the, to the Facebook page. Um, but this woman, Lori Woodruff gets off, um, listening to YouTube hypnotist guy who guides her into a trance and she has a completely hands-free orgasm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's an audio, um, sort of sensation, but it's not the same thing as audio porn. Um, so it's erotic hypnosis and there's dozens and dozens of videos and there's, it's, it's just a, it's not a person's face. It's not, it's, yeah. it's an image on there. That's just kind of like a screensaver thing. You know, that is, that is someone who has a, a, uh, cause I mean, an orgasm for many people has, has sometimes a hell of a lot more to do with your mind than it does with the parts. Yeah. With the bits. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going through there, but uh, I suppose, I, you know, so that would be more like, you know, uh, erotic master, <laughs> hands-free master. It is. In the most, uh, yeah. in the, uh, in, in the, uh, uh, most, you know, literal of senses there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we've got, uh, got a, a new toy in the other day that has, but it still has a, it has a phone app and a few other things and it looks pretty cool. And, and yeah. I was like, Ooh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like playing with this and doing that. And <laughs> so that's, I mean, technically hands-free, but you still got a toy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was talking to a couple ladies this week. Um, civilians, I'll, I'll call them. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're not in your business and they don't do a show about sex like I do. Mm-hmm. And they were quite shocked about some of the things I was sharing with them about new toys and the types mm-hmm. of things that are available mm-hmm. and things like that. So, you know, you gotta be, you are jaded mm-hmm. And I've become very used to a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff, but a lot of this stuff surprises people, mm-hmm. you know, especially the yeah, apps, yeah. And the remote and, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's really good. Especially, I mean, you can, uh, um, if you're not near your partner or someone travels a lot, I mean, I can, I, I really do see the advantage of a remote control app mm-hmm. on a toy and, you know, to be able to communicate. It really gives the idea of, uh, phone sex or Skype sex, you know, even more fun mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and then just there's a lot of just fun, you know, fun things, to, you know, for a relationship. We got a, uh, and then there's just stuff that's just silly that we get in. Like we got in little tiny vibrators and they all have uh, marijuana prints on them. They're just adorable. So if you like <laughs> sex and pot, we have the, uh, the toy for you right now. Sweet. And it's rechargeable also. Very cool. cool. And it's not, you know, and it's small, it's discreet, and it doesn't scream sex toy. I mean, they said, you know, it's got a big little pot leaf on it, but I just went, I actually sort of went, ooh, cute. And I'm like, I haven't like ooed something in a while. Yeah. And I just thought it was, I thought it was really sort of fun. And yeah. That's cute. I, I like that. Cute. No, you, every once in a while you do get very excited about something. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, Valentine's day, man. I mean, it's, yeah. it's getting close. Yeah. We're about, oh God, just a few weeks away. We got a uh, got new rope out in the store. People are asking for longer lengths and thinner. So, uh, just uh, 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 Tim and I just uh, went through forty eight hundred feet of rope, cutting and sealing and and uh, braiding it, sending it out to the forty eight hundred feet. Okay. Yep. So that's out at the stores. Cool. Um, as oh God, a week now, or something like that. Uh, Liz buys the most freaking gorgeous lingerie ever. I'm thinking it's going to be a fun Valentine's because you're you're going into a um, a sort of a long week. That following Monday oh. is that pres yes President's Day. Oh, okay. And so I know some schools don't have uh, um, Minneapolis schools. I think have a four day weekend. So there's you know different things going on. So I think people might have some fun. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, if you mm-hmm. um, have an ex that you'd like to smite. For Valentine's Day, um, there's a uh, a place that is offering you the ability to uh, name a cockroach for your ex. It costs two bucks. <laughs> okay, it's only two dollars. I can see maybe the humor value in it, but honestly, why waste time on your ex? I know. Right? I, I just, I you know, it's just, I'm, I, I, I've been in a long term relationship now, almost. 11 years coming up before that I really didn't date too much and all that but I just 
I don't, you know, mainly, oh, I mean, obviously I've been lucky that there's not someone that I would want to smite and even spend two bucks on a cockroach name. Mm-hmm. But, but it just seems, it just seems like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather spend my time dealing with my new relationship or myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's an exi- but, but a cockroach, you know, do you get to feed the cockroach to something? Um, no, actually it's, the cockroaches live in an exhibit at a zoo. Um, oh. and the, the, the money is to support different zoo programs, but you get a certificate uh-huh. and, um, you know, you get to, you know, you can give it to them. You can do whatever you want. Um, remember we talked about sex toys at the consumer electronics show Yep. Mm-hmm. and okay. Um, mm-hmm. well, I did not realize this, but there was a bit of a controversy. Apparently, um, one of the, uh, one of the awards, it was a hands-free vibrator named Ose. O-S. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I knew that, I, I, I caught like a headline, but I didn't, but I couldn't find the story again. I know I touched on it. But yeah. Good you found it. Cause I was like, uh, and then I got distracted. Um, one of the gals here, uh, uh, trashed her ankle. So we're just completely uh, discombobulated here in the office. So I'm glad you found it. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. the, the, this thing, um, it was a robotic hands-free vibrator. It won um, an innovation award at the show, but they stripped it of the honor um, and banned from the ex- exhibition floor. And they said, well, you know, it didn't fit into any of our existing product categories and should not have been eligible. It's like. No, bullshit, because this is a toy for women. And there have been plenty of male toys on that show floor. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, they. Total, total sexism. Well, and here is another thing that's available. This is kind of interesting. Something else new that we haven't talked about now is um, there's a, uh, a, it's an app that it's virtual uh, strip club, basically, from Naughty America. (laughs) And so it allows you via smartphone or tablet to Mm -hmm. literally overlay male or female stripper holograms onto the world around you. (laughs) Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's, and they said it's just so like a, word, instead of and, 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 so in other in other words it's not Pokemon Go it's Booby Go pretty much a Go Go Booby a Go Go yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah um, and uh, that's cool that's cool no <laughs> tipping necessary um, yeah so oh, uh, well I wonder yeah that might be I mean that would be a, a, another way for folks to remember because if you could if you could license your image. Mm-hmm. If you're a professional dancer or a, a, a sex worker adult, I'm sorry, you can, mm-hmm. like, uh, it would be pretty awesome to license your image for a virtual uh, um, a pole dance. I think it could be a very, very good boon to somebody's retirement plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, the royalties yeah, yeah. would be awesome. For sure. Okay. Um, Lady Gaga is uh, removing uh, her song. Uh, it's called Do What You Want With My Body. It was a duet with uh, <clears throat> R. Kelly. And now that he is oh, being mm-hmm. accused of sexual assault, she said, you know, I'm going to take this song off of iTunes and everywhere else. I'm not going to work with him again. Um, but she she kind of goes into I'll put the article up for you. It's pretty interesting. I guess she was sexually assaulted. Mm-hmm. And she said, I wish that um, at the time, 2013, that she had done that song, wrote it released it that she had had the therapy that she has now gotten Mm -hmm. to process it she goes it's just a perfect manifestation of the weird place i was in and how twisted my thinking about the episode was i have not seen that documentary um i i i i I understand that it's important for some people once again you know to know you're not alone different things stuff like that to understand you know what people have gotten away with to, to not do it in the future and stuff like mm-hmm. that but it doesn't but I can't watch it I mean yeah. I just I don't there's a lot going on in the world right now I'm not gonna add I'm not, not, not going to increase my angst or stress levels I mean I don't you know I mean I, I know enough mm-hmm. you know so I'm through there but to for, but from what I understand, it's an incredibly powerful documentary and things are going on. And it's really, for some folks, it's really helping them go, I am not alone. They're sharing their stories. They're doing that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't have any stories I have to share. Mm-hmm. I don't need to just carry, you know, I know maybe it's selfish of me, but I just, I, I can't carry that. I can't. Well, and going through there. And you know what? And I think that's okay. I think people know what they're, what they're what their level is for you, what they you can You definitely do. You do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's only so much, 
there's only, only so much I can read about the destruction of our government or the destruction of, you know, or, or the folks that someone's uh, go fund me so they can pay for their uh, insulin right now. I mean, that's all, you know, very, and I'm like, okay, I need to know. But at one point I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I, I have to go watch um, Frank, Grace Frankie or whatever. I just, I you, you need to, and I just, I looked right at that and went, I can't do that. I can't, yeah. I can't watch this, even though I know it's important. Yeah. Well, you you have probably all of the um, the knowledge and the. I mean, y- you wouldn't learn much from it mm-hmm. because you already support. Oh yeah. What it is is trying to educate people about, I guess, mm-hmm. would be. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I can I can see that. You know, would be but, my take for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, um, the the now infamous Gillette ad um mm-hmm. that is uh trying to counter um toxic quote unquote toxic you masculinity the, please be nicer to people and help people be nicer oh my god you're you're insulting us no they're just telling people be nicer be nicer that's what they're saying and when you see someone not being nice call them on it i was flabbergasted i mean talk about frass fragile masculinity for fuck's sake i mean really you're just telling someone please be nicer yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. any company um, mm-hmm. is more than welcome to mm-hmm. uh, back an idea, yeah. a movement, or whatever they want. It's- I mean, believe me, they ran the numbers on this. And they realized that pissing off some fragile um, uh, misogynist mm-hmm. was, uh, was worth the other stuff they were going to get. Oh, sure. Whereas 50 years ago, it was the opposite way. Right. You know, you make them, you make them. But they're just, they're pretty much saying, don't be an ass. Yeah. And if you see someone being an ass, stop it. Yeah. And here's the other thing. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it or you're offended by it, you don't have to buy the product either. Yeah. So mm-hmm. everybody just settle down. <laughs> it, was just, it was really funny because they're pretty much saying just, you know, be nice. Be nice to others. You know, be nice to fellow human beings. Treat everybody with respect. And if you see... That's that's what it was. Yeah. And if you can't handle that, you got big problems. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> on that note, on then that note. we will see you next week. Oh my God, it's it's gonna be February now. I know. It's just messing with my. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll be talking Valentine's pretty soon. <laughs>